there and I'm hosting, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm promoting the party. I'm like, yeah, man, this is a nice event. You see, we up here in the tub. I hear Trey songs behind me. First of all, if somebody here is on fire, it's a panic. Like, you, you know, it's a yell, yo, yo, get here. So, it should be crazy. You would have thought Trey was singing. This is all I heard. I heard, yo, your hair's on fire. <laughs> Alrighty then, alrighty then, how's it Christina, how's it Robert, how are you guys doing, fantastic Friday isn't it, oh great stuff, hopefully everybody is all ready for the weekend, I mean it's, it's all just starting now so I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week, Robert I know we had a bit of a chat yesterday so you are in good place and I uh, haven't quite looked at the link that you sent me I'll check it out a little bit later on Christina tell me where you're tuning in from let me know um, what's happening and um, yeah where, where are you coming from today today I'm talking about something that's that's a little bit different you know something that I just thought um, could be helpful for those that are probably starting out and uh, yes those that are probably starting out and uh, those that are already in business and um jonathan barney how's it going my man thank you so much for tuning in um yo i usually get this question prosper how do i market my products how do i reach my audience how do i even find that audience is that a question that um, you know you 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 are having at the moment if it is can you just type in a yes in the in the comments there so that I can figure out if the people that I'm talking to actually um, you know are looking for ways to reach out to their audience Nicole thank you so much for tuning in right um, if this is your first time watching this lunch and learn my name is Prosper Tarubinga and uh, obviously I believe that Every online business um, should be profitable and enjoyable. And uh, I also believe, um, you know, that, you know, people that are doing this sort of business should uh, create for and relate to the audiences that they want to, um, you know, reach out to and actually sell to in the end. So <clears throat> when, when, when the video started, I don't know if you checked it out. I was watching some comedy, uh, some stand-up comedy. Do you guys watch any stand-up comedy yourself? Does anyone watch stand-up comedy or some sort of, um, you know, stuff to make you laugh or things like that? Jack Talman, how's it going, my man? Hope you're having a fantastic week so far and all prepared for the weekend. Today we're talking about how... Um, comedians or how to actually engage your audience like the way um you know comedians do or the way some celebrities do can you just type in the comments there who is your favorite stand-up comedian do you have a favorite stand-up comedian edwin calvo thank you so much for tuning in do you know any stand-up comedian that's your favorite uh, person my favorite one is kevin hart um, Robert says yes once in a while, but I don't watch it in person just in case I'm not amused. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a new one. Don't you like laughing, Robert? Um, yeah, Dave Chappelle is a good one. Uh, Dave Chappelle is a really good one. And Christina says I'm tuning in from uh, South America. Cool. Esther Munjeri says Cat Williams. Yes, the Cat Principles. I like Cat Williams too. Duncan Musaka, thank you so much for tuning in. Guys, have you ever noticed that successful um, comedians or people that are, you know, that have a stage presence, they actually know how to engage an audience, yeah? Because that's the same thing that as a business person you should be able to do. Christopher, thank you so much for tuning in, man. We're talking about comedians today and how you can use their strategies um, to build an audience, maintain that audience, and keep that audience engaged, all right? So, you know, they might be funny, guys. They might be funny when you watch them. You know, Kevin Hart will leave you in stitches, um, you know, but they're also master brand builders. Dominic Stragio, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. You know, these, these comedians are, are good at building a brand, have you ever noticed that normally when somebody likes this certain comedian, they are not going to like another one, even if they speak the same way or they're from the same country or things like that? Because they, they've got a unique ability to engage their own audience. 
People can follow a comedian for years and years. I know I've been following, um, you know, people like uh, Kevin Hart. I've been following people like Martin Lawrence. I've been following people like Will Smith. I've been following a whole lot of other, you know, comedians out there. You know, C.K. Lewis, whoever you can think of, uh, Martinez and all those guys. Do you know what I mean? Because they have an ability to engage an audience. Now imagine you as a business person, if you had people that actually adore your stuff or they, they literally hang on to every word that you speak. How do they manage to do that? Because they're building a brand. They're building a name of themselves by their, you know, using their voice and their quick wit. How would that, how would it, what would it mean to your business if, if wherever you go, you fill up stadiums or wherever you go, you, you fill up whatever product you're selling and people are there and actually purchasing from you. Montre, how's it going, my man? Thank you so much for your time. All right. Do you know what I mean? It's because comedians are able to engage with us. They're able to elicit an emotional response immediately, which is a laugh. And normally when you laugh at something, it actually means that you are engaged and you are enjoying it. All right. So can you imagine you as a business person, if you could actually start engaging your audiences? I'm not saying go about there and start, um, you know, telling jokes. But I'm saying if you can actually elicit that emotional response, craft a voice that actually stands out of all the noise. How many comedians do you actually know and how many actually stand out in your and top of mind right now? It's because of what they say, how they say it and how they engage the audience. Have you ever been to a stand up comedian show and then, um, you know, if you're the people sitting in the front row, they normally just pick on the person that's in the in the audience. They do that for a reason, because what it is um, there is it's an us versus them. All right. Well, that is happening there. So if they pick one of you who is in the audience, what does that mean? It, it, it literally means it's an attack or it's a, um, you know, it's directed to you because you two are in the audience. Do you know what I mean? So they do that to elicit an, an emotion from you to elicit a response. And you only get, you know, a reaction from people if they're fully engaged. That also translates to business. You only get people who like your stuff, share your stuff, or comment on your stuff if they're fully engaged. So what are you doing to actually elicit those emotional responses? I'm not saying go about tickling people or telling jokes, but are you crafting a voice? Are you actually standing out from all the other comedians in your niche? Do you know what I mean? It's this skill set that brands can actually benefit from in this, you know, ultra connected economy. Have you ever just been sitting there and you're bored and then you're thinking, I just really could use a laugh right now. And you look up your favorite comedian. You know why? Because that comedian has content that is ready for you on demand. Can you imagine if your customers actually were sitting there as well and were waiting for you, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just looking for uh, an answer of which your service or your content provides and they're sitting there and then they just look you up. You know why? Because you're, you've got stuff that's ready for them. So that's what I've been learning pretty much because it, it, it might sound like it's all far-fetched and this theory might not work, but I'm seeing it slowly. But when I've deconstructed how these, um, you know, stand up comedians are actually telling their stories and eliciting an emotional response in as much as people are queuing all the way outside just to get into that show. And guess how many numbers they're bringing in? They, they fill up theaters, they fill up stadiums, something which maybe Tony Robbins can only do, which is in our niche, but in no one else who is an entrepreneur can do what they do. But what are they doing especially? They are just engaging with people at a human level. There's nothing different about what they do. They are literally working where they are there. You know? Can you type in the comments there? Who's your favorite comedian? Because there's so much competition for them as well. There's so much competition for consumer attention right now on the market. So brands really must be laser focused on what, you know, their audience is and what matters to that audience. Have you ever noticed 
How would a comedian know if he says something everybody else is going to laugh? Because he's in tune with that audience. He knows and he sees them reacting and he sees what's working and what's not working in real time. The only thing that's separating that comedian um, and the audience is the microphone. And guess what you have as a microphone? Your social media, your blog, your website, your podcast, all of that stuff. But they're wrecking in all those, um, you know, numbers. They're putting in the work. They, there literally is not a difference between an entrepreneur and a stand-up comedian. Because you, you, have a, you have to build your brand. You have to grow an audience. That audience needs to be engaged and you need to put out content. And that only happens when you actually know who your, um, you know, your, your, your audience is and what actually matters to them. And you start creating content that's relevant to their own interests. Just like what comedians do. And they also pick their own niches. Have you noticed? There's um, Jeff Dunham. He's got his puppets. And he does all that. Um, what do you call it? Um, uh, the, um, uh, it's, it's not miming. What is it called? When, when he, his lips are not moving, but he's, he's using a puppet to talk. And people eat that stuff. You know? They said he's got all those different products. Those little puppets are different products in his business. So have you got different products that are entertaining different sectors of your audience while engaging them? Yes, it's called a ventriloquist. I wish I could do that, but, but I can't. I need a lot of training to do that. You know? So instead of you just going to watch comedians and watching them on Netflix and scrolling through, start learning how they're actually engaging with their customers, which is their audience, because everybody that's in there has paid to be in there. So literally, they're their customers. You know? And, and, and a lot of things that, that they do, which I'm starting to learn. I mean, this is off the cuff. I'm just really trying to, to put and marry these two strategies together because I've, I've noticed it and I'm now deconstructing how they actually do it. They actually engage with their audience and they do it directly. Some of us right now as entrepreneurs, we, we, we let our customers go through hoops in order to get in touch with us. Everybody else that sends out an email that says info at whatever, that's impersonal. People don't like that anymore because they feel like nobody looks after that email. So if you have a business that sends out an info at contact at, even if you create a fake name like Sally or Robert, as long as you know that's your info at, it makes it all personal. Do you know what I mean? Half the time when somebody gives me an email that says info at, even if it's their own email, I just feel like they're just saying, there you go, here's a brochure, go throw it out yourself or figure it out yourself. So you want to make sure that your customers feel like they're connected to you. What's the one thing that stands between a comedian and, her, and, and their audience or his or her audience? It's just a microphone. You know, and have you noticed that they, they use it to make sounds, they use it to, to make the special effects, especially when they're on set. So it actually means that, you know, when, when you sit in a live audience, Steven Seaton, how are you going, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in. When you, when you sit in a live audience there, it feels very intimate. And those that actually experience it enjoy it the most because people are out there seeking experiences. As a business person, is your profile an experience for when people enter it? Is your business, is your website, is your app, is your book, anything that you're crafting, is your course an experience? Or are you just throwing it to people so that they can figure it out on their own? You know? A lot of comedians, they, they sort of feel a, a deep sense of connection with their audience. First of all, a lot of comedians talk about stuff that actually is happening in their lives and then they laugh about it. You know? They talk about their kids, they talk about how their wives are misbehaving, they talk about their neighbors, everything else that's happening around them. You know? And people eat that stuff. You know why? Because it's, it's, it's sort of a, um, an escape 
for people, for their prospects. So that's what you've got to create for your prospects and escape. Life is hard. And if you don't sugarcoat it with a, a, a few things, you know, it's difficult. So that's the reason why comedians are actually doing well in their own genre. You know why? Because they are really in tune and they're totally connected to what they're doing. Hey, good day, Vivian. Masweda, hey, mama. And Sue Mills, how are you going? Hope your holiday was cool. Do you know what I mean? Because when a comedian is standing in front there, he is literally connected to that audience. You know? And us as brand people, we don't, we want to, we want to put a wall. We want to build a wall between us and the customers. And people feel that. People feel that you don't care. Do you know what I mean? And once the, the comedian is out there throwing out his content, etc., etc., what does he do? He engages with, with, with the audience. You know, making fun of the people that are in the front row. And it makes a big difference with their relationship because they have touched the hem. They have experienced, they have been put in front of, you know, of, 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 you know, they've been put in front of somebody they actually truly respect. And that enhances the relationship and it creates a bond and it creates trust. Have you ever heard of people that go and propose to their loved ones um, at a stand-up comedy show and they ask the comedian to do that? I've seen Carl Barron do that. I've seen other people also do that. In other words, they're actually showing them that they actually care, not just about their money, but for them as a person. And people are always looking to be heard. Are you as a business actually doing exactly those things in order to be in touch and in tune with your customers or your prospects? Ah, mama, Zamurungoona is a stilipo, chambo senza. You know, and they make a lot of sales after that, after doing the live thing, they, they've got DVDs that they sell, or maybe these days it's Netflix, but you know, merchandise, however way they make their money at the back end. And, and they, they create cult like followings. You know why? Because they are viscerally engaged and invested in the welfare of their customers. One other thing that I've also noticed, I think, um, uh, what's his name? Robert mentioned it earlier when he says, I don't go to, to the small bars or to the small places that they, they do their, their comedy lives. It's not just comedians, even magicians. They actually go where the audience is. But us as business people, we, we like to create, build it, and then they will come. Have you ever noticed there's a big discrepancy there? Have you ever seen that your comedian is probably always getting interviewed on certain shows on TV? You know why? Because that's where their audience is. If they're not doing or performing their show, they're out, um, you know, doing a tour. If they're not doing a tour, they are being interviewed and constantly creating content in different audiences so that they are where the audience is. What are you doing in order to move your message? As a business person, this may seem obvious, you know what I mean? You, but to engage an audience, first you, might fi you must find that audience to engage. And that's why they do that being featured in different other people's shows. And they go to little bars, little un unknown underground dingies where they start their careers and then they're just probably the one person with the one mic and then nobody's listening to them, but they go to where that audience is. Do you know what many brands are doing? Many brands, they just push their messaging, you know, using, you know, the outmodeled or incompatible methods, meaning they don't even try to engage with their audience to even find out if people are listening to what they're saying, to even find out if anyone is even sharing their stuff or even anyone wants to know what they're talking about. And half the time when clients don't see your stuff, they obviously won't interact with it. You know, and, and, and I find this usually with people that have like the old marketing mentality, built it and they will come, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, comedians or magicians on the other hand, or people in showbiz, they're always looking for, uh, for an audience. 
They are always looking for, for people to entertain. They are always looking for a venue that they can become resident in. What are you doing? What nooks and crannies are you opening up? What new ventures are you creating with other people that are already in business? Here's gift. Gunjan Baba. Khambanjan. You know? So especially when you're starting out or when comedians are starting out, they go to small bars. They perform in, in, in old places like maybe a comic book or something like that. And usually they do it for free. You know? What are you doing to get in front of those audience? Those comedians, they go to dive bars. And after that, they build a very strong, um, you know, um, following. So maybe what you want to do is go into groups, little groups that don't have too many people. When a group has more than a thousand people, forget about it. Go to niche groups that have people that already want what you are, or that are already discussing what it is that you offer. All right. And then go in there and be heard up until you've built your own brand. You've you then come out there with, with that support. Do you know what I mean? And it benefits your brand and it grows your strategy. And guess who's laughing all the way to the bank? You know? I've been studying comedians and how they do it and how they grow and how we can marry all of that into our businesses. But I think a few of us don't really do that. You know? And one other thing you should realize, guys, you should become a content monster. You should push out a lot of content. I mean, I mean, there's always a fine line between quality and quantity. But if you have not a lot of content, because on average, every, um, what do you call it? Every content piece that goes out there, guess what happens to it? Every content piece has a lifespan. Maybe two hours, one hour, three hours. There's still studies to be made. You know? So make sure that you, when your clients are searching, they've got something that they can be educated on or entertained on. People are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, they get to know you, they get to trust you, and then they get to like you. You know, I mean, of course, you know, quality, you know, the, 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 the quality of brand's content is usually the primary sort of driver as to whether or not people will engage with your brand. But along with that, that quality, which makes people procrastinate, etc., etc., quantity is also of good consideration. You know why? The more you have many touch points that your customers can actually be um, you know, feeding off of. The more touch points you have, the more ways people can actually be, do, and have, um, you know, hear your message. In fact, you know, if you if you if you see what I mean. So at the end of the day, brands that actually engage their customers effectively and consistently. That's the reason why I show up every single day. And that's how my, my parents get to be in touch with me by checking me out live. Thank you so much, mom, for tuning in. And I think dad is watching with you there as well. You know, if you're engaging with your clients consistently, have you ever been sitting down and then you, you just maybe feel bored and you look up your favorite comedian and then you watch a couple of videos because you know it's there, because you know it's, it's guaranteed. Like I said, people are coming in for information and education. So create edutainment for them. Then they will not have to go anywhere else. I'm not saying say jokes or whatever, but you really just want to make sure that, you know, there's a lot of noise out there on the market, but make sure your voice is being heard. You know, before you make it to the big screen or to the smoking podcast or whatever it is, there's a, a lot of other opportunities that, you know, you can engage your audiences through. Businesses are all about mean, mind control and we need to get customers to think for themselves. It's, oh, that's a really good one again. Give your customers something to think about. Because once people make their own conclusions, 
it's easier for them to maintain because they feel obliged because of that conclusion they've made for themselves. But you want to give them, you know, um, reasons to make those conclusions. You know? And once you've done that, make sure you maintain those relationships. You know, there's a, there's a common misconception that, you know, your customers would demand perfection and, and that's the only way that they will buy. That's, that's, that's a hogwash. In reality, customers just want to be treated well. Customers just want to be heard. Customers want to, to belong somewhere where they feel like they belong. So if you're pushing them aside, if you're not drawing them in and you're not, you know, relating to them and creating for them, just like the comedians are doing, then you are probably leaving a lot of money on the table. 70% of purchases, you know, are made from people based on the way they actually feel. Nicole says, interview your mom. <laughs> What would you want me to ask her, Nicole? You know? Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, brands should actually focus on building those strong relationships with different customer segments instead of just pushing for that one-time sale. All right? Know what makes your, your customers tick. Know what creates, you know, long-term engagement with them. Sometimes people are fans for life. Wouldn't that be nice to have forever customers? You know? And I know a lot of comedians, they, they understand the importance of actually building these relationships. You know why? Because whenever they're on tour or whenever they're talking about people, they are offering a deep level of honesty about themselves. Sometimes you, you, you might stop listening to them because it gets too personal. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's a lot. You know? Once you, you open up yourself, once you, 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 you help people understand who you really are, they feel a lot closer to you. And the closer you are to the heart, the closer you are to the, to, 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 to the wallet. And um, Sue says, value is best marketing prosper. It's the only way. Understandable. When people understand your values, when people understand what you stand for, when people understand what makes you tick, they get to know you intimately, they get to trust you and they like you. And people, as far as I'm concerned, do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So when you're on the weekend right now, instead of you just flicking through Netflix and just watching things and just consuming content, study. Study how they're doing it. Study how they're engaging with their clients. Study how they talk to them. Study how they fill up those rooms. You know, because when you come back, you will come back with a new list. I was watching Kevin Hart and I was just laughing. Automatically, my day has just gotten better. Because I don't know if you realize this, but your life story and your experience have greater importance and market value than you could ever, ever dream of. You know, you're here to make a difference in this world. So, you know, by what you do and then the people that you're going to help, if you package that knowledge, if you package all that information, you'll help other people succeed. And you get paid in direct accordance to the value that you bring to the marketplace. So instead of just following what other marketers are doing, look at other industries. Like I looked at the entertainment industry today and looking at how comedians are actually making a killing. You know? How, you know, you know when, when your brand can actually tap into that human aspect and people get to, to create their lifestyles around you, then you've won. All right? I don't know how this one went. Tell me in the comments if this one was a really good one. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that you get paid, all right, by sharing your how-to information, by sharing your experience, and you can create a business that's lucrative and something that you can actually enjoy. 
I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. That's the reason why I go out there and study what other markets are doing, what other people are doing to bring in customers so that we can see if it's not relatable to what we're doing here. And I found out comedians are doing the same things that we're trying to do. Study them. You might, you might learn a lesson or just get a laugh out of it. But at the end of the day, remember, when you're building an audience, you got to engage them. You got to make sure that, you know, you, you, you're nurturing that audience and they get to know you. And the more they know you, the more they, 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 they trust you. And that's when transactions start happening. Don't just go out there and try and sell when people don't actually know what you do or who you do it for and why they should care. All right. I'm always happy to have a chat with anyone who is interested in building a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you can have a free coffee date with me virtually online so that we can see what you're doing and see how it's actually working. So if that's what you're after, just type in the word coffee and then I'll send you a link to my calendar. In the meantime, I want you to go out and have a fantastic weekend. And those that have been acknowledging my mom, thank you so much. And mom, hope you have a fantastic weekend, guys. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Bye for now.